The U.S. government has stepped in to rescue people and businesses who had money in two failed banks. Silicon Valley Bank, which financed many tech startups, that collapsed Friday, while Signature Bank in New York went down over the weekend. The president insisted Monday the banking system is safe and taxpayers won't pay for a bailout. Joining us now is Keith Norica. He's executive vice president of Potomac Global Partners, a consulting firm for the, for the finance sector. He's also former acting comptroller of the currency. Keith, give us your assessment of whether what happened with Silicon Valley Bank might spread and how common is your assessment uh, among those on Wall Street and in other banks? Well, look, I think the, the Fed and the FDIC and the administration are taking this seriously as they should because you know, we're seeing people line up around the street uh, trying to get their money out of banks, which is the, you know, the definition of a bank run. So uh, a lot of actions have been taken over the past weekend to stop that. Um, we've seen some stability restored uh, today, but, but weakness, obviously, uh, in a certain sector of the banking um, stocks. And, uh, and so I think uh, there's still uh, risk here. And, and a lot of risk uh, in the underlying balance sheets of banks that's going to have to be addressed. You talked about the actions taken this, this weekend. I want to ask you about the actions that weren't taken by regulators in the past with respect to Silicon Valley Bank. Did the regulators miss something in the sense that the bank had so much of its deposits in one kind of instrument or one set of investments and that that should have been a warning sign that caused them to move? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, the, the, the phenomenon that Silicon Valley Bank suffered from and many other banks are suffering from uh, is one that, you know, we've known about at least since the 70s or 80s, uh, which caused the, the savings and loan crisis, uh, what's known as a duration gap between assets and funding. Um, you know, I think uh, former governor, uh, Fed Governor Dan Torillo in the Obama administration said, was quoted today saying the regulators should have seen this quote from a mile away. Uh, I know JP Morgan put out a bulletin on Silicon Valley Bank's uh, uh, duration gap problem on its balance sheet back in November. Um, I put out a blog post on it uh, January 3rd. Uh, so I think it was was known, but, uh, but the regulators, uh, for whatever reason, uh, didn't act precipitously. Can you explain the gap between assets and funding for those of us at home? And then secondly, sure. how widespread is that uh, gap? I mean, if they were, if regulators were asleep in the past, uh, how much do they have to look at now that's a problem? Well, look, it's, it's a phenomenon that's, uh, I think, faced banks in every single uh, rate rising um, environment. Uh, so basically, uh, a, a bank lends long or buys long assets and it funds short. Uh, think about your deposit can be withdrawn at any moment of the time. It's a demand liability. Uh, CD isn't much longer, and it's certainly not as long as, say, a 30-year mortgage or even a 30-year treasury bond. So that's the risk of, as interest rates go up, the value of the assets on a bank's balance sheet go down. Uh, and to make up that difference, uh, the equity of a bank has to get charged. Senator Warren, Elizabeth Warren, argued in the New York Times today that the 2018 rollback of the Dodd-Frank legislation and less oversight from the Fed are partially to blame. What's your uh, feeling about that from the rollback of Dodd-Frank? Does she have a point? Uh, well, I don't think it actually applies here. I mean, certainly I think the Fed and, and the other bank regulators were asleep at the switch today. Uh, if you look at the Financial Stability Oversight Council's website today, uh, this isn't even one of their top priorities. Climate change is, for instance, uh, but not this. So um, I think she has a point there. Um, the 2018 regulations actually didn't really affect this bank. Um, if anything, uh, the, the last administration put in place uh, stress testing uh, through regulation uh, that wasn't even required by the statute uh, for quarterly liquidity stress tests. So, um, you know, I think um, there's a lot of blame to go around and certainly we'll get to that at the appropriate time after, after the financial system is stabilized. But, um, you know, I think uh, there's more to be done. What do you think about the new bank term funding program established by the Biden administration? Is that going to help with this short term uh, nervousness at this moment? Yeah, no, I think uh, I think it'll help a lot. Certainly, I think if Silicon uh, Valley Bank had been able to access the discount window uh, in time uh, last Friday morning, uh, that may have staved off 
uh, its collapse before the open of business, which is sort of unprecedented. Uh, so I think this goes a long way to stabilizing things. I mean, it. I think the complication is it runs in the teeth of uh, quantitative tightening and, and trying to get a hold of inflation. So that's the balancing act for the Fed is to effectuate raising interest rates and tightening the monetary supply while also providing enough liquidity so um, banks don't experience the type of runs that we've seen over the past week. Very quickly, Keith, before I let you go, bottom line, um, how nervous are you about the banking system right now and how long will you maintain that nervousness? Well, look, these, these things come up and they are very scary uh, when they happen. Uh, the regulators have moved in and, and they're taking action. They may need to take more and they don't always get it right the first time, but uh, I have great confidence that uh, the banking system will go on. I think one of the things the administration is going to have to relax is its sort of moratorium on approving bank mergers because that's you know private capital that's going to make the make the industry stronger and and that's going to have to happen and it's going to have to happen in a hurry and the more sort of extreme elements like Senator Warren uh, represents are going to have to relax their objections to that. All right, Keith Nareka, thank you so much for being with us. All right, thanks, John.